storming out here. Oh well, I guess we'll just continue with our video and see how it goes. At this video, it was supposed to be about the International Harvesters, the Electrol Farmall 400 tractor. However, it turned out to be about the electrification of farm tractors and implements, along with the International Harvester, Electrol tractors, and Electrol systems. So, let's travel back in history to 1752, where we will find Ben Franklin doing his kite, key, and lightning electricity experiments. Then we will begin traveling through history to the present day. Our travels will take us through the most important discoveries and innovations that have led us to where we are today and how electricity is slowly going to power tractors and implements in the future. One day in June of 1752, it occurred to Franklin that he could test his hypothesis about lightning and electricity by flying a kite. He placed a foot-long pointed wire on the top of a kite as a conductor. Then at the bottom end of the string where he would hold it, he attached a silk ribbon and a metal key. A metal wire then was connected to the key to a lightning jar. When the storm passed overhead, it went over his kite and the conductor drew electricity into his kite. The kite was not struck by lightning though but the conductor drew negative charges from the charged cloud to the kite, down the string, to the metal key, and then into the laden jar. This experiment led Franklin and other scientists in other countries to do further experiments with electricity. Moving from 1752 forward all the way to 1895, an article was published in Scientific American. The U.S. Council in Leipzig, Germany, reported on an electric plow built by Zimmerman and Company. The Zimmerman plowing rig consisted of a stationary steam engine that was attached to a dynamo or an early generator. Two electric cables ran from the dynamo to the electric motor on a balance plow. There were two different versions of the Zimmerman electric plow. One of them was a 10 horsepower two bottom plow and the other was a 16 horsepower four bottom plow. The motor worked upon a chain which had been previously stretched across the field and anchored at each end. Using a chain, the electric motor pulled the plow back and forth across the field. I should stop here and explain the balance plow and how it works. A balance plow worked very similar to today's flip over plows. Both plows allowed the farmer to plow both directions across his field while throwing the furrow in the same direction no matter which way he was going. The difference in the plows is today's flip over plow is attached to the tractor and controlled directly by the tractor. Whereas the balance plow was controlled by a cable stretched across the field and pulled back and forth by two different steam engines. Moving on through history, from 1895 we take a very short hop to 1900, where the Bruchke tr electric tractors were used for plowing in Germany. The Bruchke tractors used surplus electric power from a sugar mill that was sent to a stationary power point to power the 220 volt electric motor on the tractor. Then following the Zimmerman method of operation, the Bruchke tractors stayed at one end of the field, while a winding drum operated a cable system pulling the plow back and forth across the field. Another use of a balance plow. 1925 Scotland's Major Andrew McDowell constructed an electric tractor on a three-wheeled chassis. It was powered by a 12 and a half horsepower electric motor. The electric power was supplied from a stationary power point that could be repositioned as necessary. British efforts to develop an electrical tractor began in 1949 when the Electrical Research Association demonstrated a Ransom's MG 
track layer that had been modified by fitting a 9 horsepower electric motor on it. The electricity supply came through a cable connecting the tractor to a power source at the top of a high pylon in the middle of the field. The connector could turn 360 degrees, which was allowing the tractor to work in ever decreasing circles. As it moved closer to the pylon, counterweights took up the slack to keep the cable under tension. This method had many drawbacks, one of which is how many circle farms exist. Well, I guess you could use it in pivot fields. The electrical supply point and the cable to the tractor or the implement was a bit of a limitation on the travel distance the electric tractor could travel. The answer, of course, would be to develop a tractor that could carry its own electric power source and operate independently of a fixed supply point. Leaping ahead to 1983, we see South Dakota State University agricultural engineering students begin working on their chore master tractor. Two 32 cell battery blocks provided enough electricity to supply two motors. One motor for the hydraulic system, including the power steering and the PTO, and the other powered a three range hydrostatic transmission with four wheel drive. However, obvious limitations were the 1983 storage batteries gave the chore master a very limited operating time, less than three hours. Turning the clock backwards again to October of 1959, Alice Chalmers developed a fuel cell that could power a farm tractor. Incidentally, the first vehicle ever powered by a fuel cell. Maybe now science has developed a source of electricity that can be carried on the tractor. Nope, not quite yet. Fuel cells were ready, but the market wasn't ready for them. So the fuel cells entered the space race and they helped get us to the moon. A quick hop back just a couple of years to 1954, an international harvester and General Electric had teamed up to develop a belt-driven generator and mounted it on a Farmall Super MTA tractor. International also mounted it on the Farmall 400 and 450 series of tractors, as well as the McCormick Super W6TA tractors. This is a model of the tractor that this entire video is supposed to be about. The International Harvesters Farmall 400 tractor with Electrol system on it. Speccast made this in 1 16th scale. It's a die cast body with plastic parts and hard rubber tires. It has a steerable front end on it and it is extremely well detailed. But the coolest feature on this guy is the Electrol unit where it has the Electrol generator and it has the belts that hook it up to the engine and other parts. They also put the little man on it and this big placard here that shows off that this was the tractor that the International took to the farm shows to explain their new Electrol system. Pretty cool. It's a shame that this system didn't really last. But it's nice that Speccast went on and made such a great model out of this piece of history. They also made a 450 standard with an Electrol unit, which is basically the, it's the same body, same part, only it's got a standard rear end on it and a wide front, and the 450s had white patches here instead of all red. And then the 450s also had white grills. They made it many years ago in their 16th scale line. And their 16th scale line is not quite the level of Ertl's precision, but it's very close and it's well above Ertl's Prestige series. So whenever a spec cast comes out with a model, it's a very nice model. And they did a great job replicating the Electrol for International. The revolutionary IH Electrol system was born, but it was very short lived. The idea was to replace the PTO drives on tractors which were dangerous and difficult for farmers to connect. 
the electron generator developed 208 volt three phase current as well as single phase 220 and 115 volt electricity. That was enough energy to power electrical implements, operate milk rooms, power a farmhouse, and many other electrical devices. Remember, this is the 1950s and rural electrification was going on, but it wasn't totally reliable. So if you had a dairy, you needed a backup generator. And that was part of the idea and the thought pattern behind the electrol system by IH. International Harvester. They planned to make many, many different electric implements for the electrol system. <laughs> but they only made an electric baler. The 55W Rectangular Baler. IH also considered mounting electric motors on a combine but they didn't follow through on this. However, IH did make a trailer mounted electrol generator. Ironically, driven off a PTO from a tractor, the very device the electrol system was intended to replace. IH also made a pickup truck with a bed mounted electrol generator. That would be awful useful on a farm. IH and GE, they had high hopes for the success of the electrol system but there simply was just not any real market for it. And they're very hard to find today. Even though IH Electrol System was carried on the tractor, IH could not overtake the development and popular use of the PTO, especially with the introduction of the live PTO in the same year, 1954. IHC's Electrol System then met with the same fate as the Zimmerman Electric Plow. Belarus, their 3023 prototype tractor was shown at Agritechnica 2009 in Hanover, Germany. It was a tractor with a 220 horsepower diesel engine, a 172 kilowatt generator, a diesel electric drivetrain, and an electrically driven front PTO. It became the first tractor with a diesel electric drivetrain in series production. The same year, in 2009, New Holland demonstrated its fuel cell NH2 experimental T6000 model tractor. The NH2 tractor is being tested now on a farm in La Belota in Turin, Italy. Since we cannot accurately predict the future, we can only say that there is still a future for electrification of farm tractors and implements as the manufacturers keep on testing new innovations in electric power systems. Who knows what the future holds for agricultural equipment? But one thing is certain, it will be a bright, beautiful tomorrow. I want to thank you guys for watching and it means so much to me if you'd hit that thumbs up button and hit the subscribe button to join my YouTube family. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, closing up the shop doors on another episode of Toy Talk.